sort the slicer by pivot table values. Here's a slicer. Here's the pivot table. It's these values that we want to sort the slicer. Now, this slicer isn't even connected to this. It's actually connected to this pivot table. If I click Quad, it doesn't change the result of this pivot table at all. It's controlling this pivot table. Now, our goal is to have a drop down in the cell so we can simply select descending Z to A. That'll sort the values, biggest to smallest, and the labels in the row area of the pivot table and our slicer. Now, the person who asked this question has a lot of data. So we're limited to using Power Query, DAX, and the data model. And this will be an advanced data modeling video. Now, what we're going to have to conceptually do is we're going to have to create this table inside the data model. We will take this, bring it into Power Query, get a unique list. We'll have to create an index and connect these two tables, dump them both in the data models, and then we'll create DAX measures and DAX calculated columns over in the data model. All right, let's see how to do this. We click in one cell in our fact table, data, get and transform, bring it into Power Query with from table. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click and duplicate the code that brought this table into Power Query. Now we're going to F2 and rename this, something like D product. Right click, remove other columns. Right click, remove duplicates. Up in Add Column, we want to add an index column from 1. Now I need to bring this index into the F Sales, because right now F Sales has this product. Because one of the problems we'll encounter is if we try to sort this column based on total sales, we get a circular dependency error. And so we need to have this as a unique identifier for each record. Now we go over to F Sales, Home, Combine, and Merge Queries. We're going to take the first table, Product. The second table, which is like a lookup table, and when we select this, now we have a connection and we can pull the index over into F Sales. Click OK. In the product column, we do not want use original column names. And the only column we want to bring in, in essence, doing a lookup is index. Click OK. Now we can remove product. Right click Remove. I don't like this date time, so we'll change it to date. Now we can load both of these tables into the data model. Close and load, close and load too. Only create a connection, add this to the data model, click OK. There we can see they've been loaded to the data model. Now I need to bring this into the data model, Power Pivot, Add to Data Model. We're going to go over to F Sales, click in the Date column. And in Power Pivot, unlike Power BI, we can create a date table automatically. So we go to Design, Calendar, Date Table, and New. I'm going to rename this to D date. Back in home, diagram view. We'll arrange the tables. DIS is for disconnected because it won't have a relationship. Date to date, index to index. Now we need to add a measure for total sales, so back to data view. F sales. We'll pull this up, and in the measure grid, Type total sales, we can see it up in the formula bar, colon, equal sign, and the sum. We can click on sales, close parentheses, and when we enter it, we can add some formatting. Now, this is a measure. We can see the formula over here. When this measure is dropped into a pivot table, or into a column in another table, or an iterator, in all three cases, Filter context will occur, and we won't see the overall grand total, but we'll see the total for each product. Now, that's important, because later we're going to use a sum function in a calculated column, a naked one like that, with the actual sum, not the measure. And we'll see that it actually gives us the total for everything. Because whereas a measure can see filter context, aggregate formulas cannot. Now we go over to D product. And in Advanced, we're going to go to Table Behavior, 
we're going to say row identifier index. And the key is index. This will add, in essence, a primary key so we don't get a circular dependency error. Click OK. Now let's add our DAX calculated column. We'll call this product sales up in the formula bar. If I type a square bracket and T, there's our measure. That measure has a hidden calculate, which is what actually, when I hit Tab and hit Enter, allows that aggregate calculation to see the filter context. What that means is the quad actually filtered the full fact table. So that sum function is adding only the quad sales. Now just to show you, over here, we'll delete this later. If I do sum of f sales sales, there's no filter context for an aggregate function. Now the cool thing is we're going to need both of these because we need a way to sort. Right now, if I say this column, product, please sort by product sales, the smallest number with sunset, that always appears on top when we drag the product column into the pivot table or into a slicer. So in this column, I somehow need to do the reverse. I need Yanaki to be the smallest and Sunset to be the biggest. Well, guess what? If we take the total overall and divide by each one of those numbers, of course, when we take the same number and divide it by a smaller number, a bigger number comes out. So we'll just divide the aggregate function by the measure. And sure enough, Yanaki has the smallest. Sunset has the biggest. Now, we're not going to use this in two different columns. We're going to use both formulas in a single column. Copy. I'm going to delete that column. So now after the equal sign, we're going to say if. And we need to get at the one value in that column in the disconnected sort column. And because there's just one value, we can use the values. And we want to get the value, which is a single cell from that sort column. Values is interesting because if there were lots of values, it would deliver all of them. But if it's a single value, it delivers it as a single scalar value, which is exactly what we need. Then we ask the question, are you ascending, comma, if you are, control V, otherwise, total sales, close parentheses. Now, this, these numbers are going to change depending on what we do over in the Excel worksheet. Now we come over and say, hey, this product, please sort by. We want it to sort by product sales. Click OK. Now, if you come and look here when you sort over in the Excel worksheet, you don't see anything change here. But it'll change in the pivot table and the slicer. Over in diagram view, what's so cool is we do something in Excel. The product sales column sorts accordingly, which then changes the order of the products. Now we can create a pivot table. I'm going to say existing, somewhere like right there, click OK, click OK. Over here from product, we'll drag product down to rows, sales down to values. I'm going to click in a cell a couple to the right, go up to insert pivot table. It knows that we have something in the data model. Click OK. Date table, more. Day of week, F sales, total sales. Now from this pivot table, we go up to Analyze, Filter, Insert Slicer. And there it is from Product. This product column that will sort according to whatever we put there. Click OK. And now if we test our slicer, Yanaki, it's controlling this pivot table and not this one, which is what we want. Now the moment of truth. If I come up here and change the drop down to descending, just like that, both the pivot table and the slicer update. Oh, but wait a second. Descending, that's not descending. So we go back to the data model, data view, select product sales, this formula element, Control X, delete, comma. That goes into value if false, and Enter. That is absolutely beautiful. It looks like when we select from our dropdown, 
the slicer is actually working off the pivot table values. But as we know, it's a back-end data modeling trick. Now, the other question some of you are asking is, how in the world when I change something in the cell, does stuff over in the data model and the pivot table automatically update? Well, that's a little VBA code magic. If you don't have VBA, you just come up and use the Refresh button. Now, as all of you at the Excel is Fun channel know, I'm no good with VBA. But Mr. Excel is, and he helped me out. So we go look, Developer, Visual Basic. And on the actual sheet, not in a module, that's our sheet, here's the code. You got to make sure to have Worksheet from the left and Change. On the right, we have our private sub, end sub, and then in between, if the target address, and there it is, F4, then active workbook dot refresh all and if. So thanks, Mr. Excel, for that little bit of code. If we test it one more time. That is amazing. All right, if anyone else has any ideas of how to do this with data modeling, and I actually chose to do some of the formulas over with DAX and the data model because they tend to be faster than Power Query formulas because we actually could have created this whole table right in the Power Query window. But if anyone has any ideas about how to get a slicer for a data model pivot table to sort based on the values in the data model pivot table, Post in the comments below. All right, we'll see you next video.